Wisdom is the main thing. Walking in wisdom should be top priority. In this message we understand what wisdom is and distill the teaching of the book of Proverbs into five summary statements. What I want us to do this morning today and uh, next Sunday is uh, spend a little time talking about uh, the importance of walking with wisdom. So I'm just titling these two messages today and next Sunday as wisdom walk or walk with wisdom walk wisely and uh, so we will spend a few moments this morning as well as next Sunday just talking about uh, wisdom walk and of course uh, a lot of what we will be sharing or looking at is drawn from the book of uh, proverbs and um, uh, you know it's a wonderful thing to do an entire a study on the book of proverbs but uh, what we will attempt to do is just to kind of crystallize or uh, distill some of the key things from uh, these 31 chapters over 900 verses uh, just distill some of those things in a two part uh, message as we talk about uh, wisdom or walking with wisdom uh, to begin with let's go to proverbs chapter 4 verses 5 through 9 proverbs chapter 4 verses 5 through 9 verse 5 let's read it get wisdom get understanding do not forget not turn away from the words of my mouth do not forsake her and she will preserve you love her and she will keep you wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and in all you're getting get understanding exalt her and she will promote you she will bring you honor when you embrace her she will place on your head an ornament of grace a crown of glory she will deliver to you look at verse 7 and uh, you know what what verse 7 tells us it says wisdom is the principal thing principal thing meaning it's the main thing the thing that we have to place first or thing that has to be uh, most important the supreme thing the message bible says above all and before all put this at the top of your lists so you know you and i all of us are pursuing different things in life pursuing our college degrees or you know careers or success or we are you know we have all these dreams and all of that is fine but the bible is saying wisdom is the main thing you go after that and look at some of the instructions in these verses in verse you know verses 5 um, through 9 you look at those um, instructions it says get wisdom do not forsake her that means don't give up on this uh, exalt wisdom meaning give wisdom its in place of importance in your life uh, and he also says embrace wisdom meaning hold on passionately to wisdom and he says if you do these things then here's the outcome wisdom will cause these things to happen to you verse 6 it'll preserve you keep you it means to protect you guard you uh verse 8 he says wisdom will promote you raise you up to a high place verse 8 he again says it'll bring you honor it'll exalt you give you stature among people you see and many times we are pursuing these things we want success we want to be exalted we want promotion but he's saying you get wisdom and then these things will follow you in your life so wisdom is the main thing it's the thing that you and i should be pursuing foremost is what the bible is telling us it's the principal thing go after that these other things will come on into your life. So, we're going to spend some time talking about wisdom today and uh, just uh, a little bit more next Sunday. But what is wisdom? And he said like wisdom. What is it? If you want to put it very succinctly in a very simple statement, we could put it like this. We could say wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge. So you go to school, they pump knowledge into you. grade 10 grade 12 take it in maybe a four year degree take it more take more information and knowledge 
I do your master's. And more, more information. So you're getting all this information. But when you step into your place of work, what is expected of you is, hey, can you apply all of that to do something good? It's not enough to know all this stuff, but can you translate that into something useful to solve problems and so on? So wisdom gives us the capacity, it's the ability to apply knowledge for what? You you can mention some things, it's to solve problems. And you get paid to solve problems. You use, you're able to apply knowledge to determine the right course of action in a situation. So you can listen. These are all the different things that are happening. But then what is the right thing to do in this situation? Requires wisdom. Or even to foresee the outcome of situations. You say, well, I know it's going to turn out like this. Therefore, we must be preemptive. You take this action right now because I'm able to foresee, I'm able to foretell, or forecast uh, what is going to happen. So wisdom is the ability to use knowledge, apply it uh, into various situations of life. And, you know, having knowledge, gathering information, it is important. But these days we have an overload of that. Every click you make, information is being collected. Several different people are tracking us. A lot of data has been gathered. But then that data by itself needs to be interpreted, needs to be understood. And then it needs to be translated into things that can help do things, solve problems or whatever. And that's what you and I or people generally, that's what we get paid for. Not just reporting on information, but what an employer is looking for. They're saying, Based on all that information, can you tell me what I need to do? What should I do? And that's what you get paid for. Now that requires wisdom. It it requires the ability to interpret and then determine what is the right course of action. What should we be doing? What is the meaning of all of this? We can also state in wisdom like this. Wisdom is the combination of insight, understanding, and prudence. Are you all with me so far? So insight means you are able to go past the surface and look at what's happening underneath things. You're able to see the hidden meaning, the root cause. You're going beyond the surface. For example, if you just tell your manager, well, we had a campaign and, you know, I'm just using small numbers just for our ability to grasp. Uh, you say, well, well, we had 100 responses. Well, that's okay, 100 responses. But what your manager wants to know is, what is the breakup? What, what is the meaning of that hundreds? Out of the hundred, you say, well, we had a peak there. Uh, and then in the demographics, we had between 20 to 30, that age group, we had 30, uh, 60 people respond. Okay, that's useful. But go further. Why did those 60 people respond? Were they male or female? Uh, oh, any more information we know about them? What pulled them in? And then more meaning. You know, uh, what else do we need to do? Do we need to focus more efforts on another age group, etc., etc.? The, the man, your manager doesn't just want, I owe 100 people responded to this campaign. He wants more meaning. He wants insight. Are you with me? And that's what wisdom gives us the ability to do. So wisdom is a combination of insight and understanding. Your ability to comprehend the situation. So there are the ABCs, which are the basics. And there are also the XYZs, the more complex thing. Now when you understand something, you have the ability to make the XYZ sound like the ABC. Sometimes when we don't understand something and we talk about it, the ABCs itself sounds like the XYZs. <laughs> it's like, man, this is, I don't understand. But somebody who really understands something they can take the X, Y, Z and make it look like the ABC. Because that person really understands what he's talking about. 
has understanding. You are able to comprehend the situation or the matter at hand. So wisdom involves insight, understanding, and then prudence. Prudence is skill, intelligence, uh, the ability to determine what is the right thing to do. Uh, sometimes we use terms like common sense or being street smart. That means uh, they know what's the right thing to do. Prudence, being prudent. And so wisdom gives us insight, understanding, and prudence. So the combination of these is what wisdom is. You all with me so far? So where does wisdom come from? Proverbs tells us very clearly, first of all, you know, God is the source of wisdom. Proverbs 2 verse 6. Let's read it together. The Lord gives wisdom. Let me hear you. Come on, just speak up a little louder. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. So God is the source of it. So God's the source. That's why you know, the Bible tells us, if, you, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. Because he gives so whatever situation you and I are, have to handle, you know, whether it's you're a homemaker and you've got a situation at home or you've got to deal with things uh, with children or finances or your workplace, your profession, your career, or, or you're running your own business, whatever, God gives wisdom. He's a source. I mean, you look to him. Say, God, I need wisdom. You said wisdom is the main thing. Get it. So God, I'm coming to you. Give me wisdom. How to handle the situation. How to solve. What is the right thing to do, God? Uh, open my eyes that I can go beyond what's on the surface to see what's underneath. God, open my eyes. I want insight into this situation. I want an understanding of what's happening. God, give me prudence. I want to know what's the right thing to do. I want to know what course of action I should take. God is the source. Secondly, the problems also teaches us here that we, res we receive wisdom from one another. Proverbs 13, verse 20. Let's read it out loud. He who walks with wise men will be wise. So we receive wisdom from one another. Provided we are with, in the right company. With the right people. If you're with wise people. They're going to help you become wise. Gain some wisdom. You can learn from them. You can increase in your understanding and your ability to uh, comprehend situations. So we receive wisdom through others. And third, of course, we receive wisdom through training, learning, and uh, life experiences. And Proverbs highlights some of these things uh, that uh, as you learn through your life experiences. But we must also maintain our wisdom walk in all seasons of life. All seasons. You maintain your walk of wisdom. Whether we are in times of great success or whether we go through times of great distress, we must learn to maintain our wisdom walk. Like David, he's an example of a person who, uh, who behaved wisely even in times of great success. You know the story, after David killed Goliath, all the people are celebrating him. But very interestingly, 1 Samuel 13 mentions in many places, David behaved himself wisely. It didn't, he didn't let it get into his head. He still had his feet on the ground, so to speak. Are you with me? So even in times of great success, walk with wisdom. In all seasons of life, walk with wisdom. And also in times of great distress, because life has its seasons. There are times when everything is going great, but there will be those challenges, those challenging seasons of life. And Job is an example. The Bible says, you know, you know, Job faced a lot of stuff, but the Bible says, in all these things, Job behaved wisely and did not sin. Sometimes you meet people and say, why did you do that? Well, I was just going through a tough time. I just did it. No, don't let good times or difficult times cause you to do foolish things. Don't use that as an excuse. No, you maintain your walk of wisdom all the time. Amen? That's a good place to say amen. 
All right. So what we want to do uh, this morning is try to condense this, the book of Proverbs, which of course is a very large book. Like we mentioned, there are 31 chapters, over 900 verses of scripture. But we want to condense that into some summary statements. But let's read from the very beginning of Proverbs chapter 1. I'll just read the first four verses. So if you turn there, Proverbs chapter 1. Let's read the first four verses just to understand why this book was given to us. Are you ready? Let's read. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction. To perceive the words of understanding. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment and equity. To give prudence to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. So, this is the introduction to the book. Why, are you, why is this book written? Solomon is saying very clearly. This book is written to give you wisdom. To give the young man prudence and knowledge and understanding. Right, so the whole book of Proverbs is written to bring wisdom into our lives. God. God kind of wisdom, the wisdom that comes from God. And so, and I was trying, I was thinking, man, wouldn't it be nice to do a study on the book of Proverbs? But that means 31 chapters, you know, 915 verses. That, that'll take us a long time. So, how can we distill this book and give it in a way that you know you can have it in your finger, in your fingertips, so to speak? So I came up with these five statements, five summary statements. You can literally have it on the tip of your fingers. <laughs> but I'm not saying, you know, this is all you need to know. No, please read the book of Proverbs. <laughs> please read through it and just soak in it. But I think if we remember these five summary statements, it will help us get the essence of this book, the book of Proverbs. Now, you may come up with five different statements. And that's perfectly fine. Or you may want to add to this. And again, that's perfectly fine. But I just felt that these five statements capture for us the essence of the book of Proverbs. So here are those five statements. We'll spend a few moments on that. Number one, always and in all things, honor the Lord. Number two. Always be listening. Always be learning. Third statement. Don't take what is not yours. Number four. Don't keep what you should be giving away. And number five. Always and all things walk in humility. So I felt that you know, if you go through all the verses in the book of Proverbs, they fit into one of these. And so these five statements in, uh, capture the essence of what Proverbs uh, contains for us. Let me just explain each one of these. Number one, always and in all things honor the I mean, no, I'll just quote one or two verses as we go along. There are many, many script verses in Proverbs. But we know these verses, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Let's read them out together loud. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. So it says, in all your ways, whatever you're doing, Acknowledge the Lord. Honor the Lord. So always, in all things, honor the Lord. Now we know this, you know, this, the scripture that says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord. Fear means, it's not a morbid fear, oh God is going to come down on me with lightning and thunder. No, it's not that morbid fear. It's simply... An 
holy awe, a reverence that says, I want to do what's right and pleasing before the Lord. I want to do what's right and pleasing before the Lord. That's the fear of the Lord. So it always, in all things, you honor God. So you find a lot of things, a lot of the instructions that are given to us through the book of Proverbs essentially boil down to this. That you are choosing to do what's right and pleasing to the Lord or operating out of honor for God. You know, we can run through a lot of things, and I'll just mention these in the sermon notes that are available on our website. I've, actually, I've given you the scripture references, but I'm just making the statements here. For instance, the Proverbs instruct, instructs us to avoid evil. Why would you do avoid evil? Because you want to honor the Lord. Avoid the enticement of people when they call you to sin or do wrong things. Why would you avoid it? Because you want to honor the Lord. Honor your parents. Why would you do it? Because you want to honor the Lord. Walk in mercy and truth. Why would you do that? Because you want to honor the Lord. Walk in integrity. Honor God with your possessions. Receive the Lord's correction. Speak truth always. Don't be deceptive in your work. Don't put your trust in riches. Tame your temper. Do not retaliate. Choose good friends. Now all these are instructions throughout the book of Proverbs. And you will be able to follow all of this if you simply, simply do this one thing. Always, in all things, honor the Lord. Are you with me? So any decision you're going to make, say, I just want to do the thing that is right and pleasing to God. Simple. What is right? What is pleasing to God? I want to do that. You will follow. You will be staying within uh, all the other instructions and problems that relate to this. Number two. Always be listening. Always be learning. Again, a lot of instructions and problems point to this thing. Our willingness to listen. Our willingness to keep learning. Let's read Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 5. A wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. What will a wise man do? Keep on talking. Now, a wise man will listen and increase learning. So, Always be listening. Always be learning. It doesn't matter if, you know, you, uh, you know, you've got a lot of experience or you've read a lot or whatever. But you're still in that mode. Your stance is, I'm going to listen. I'm going to learn. A lot of instructions in Proverbs fall in this category. He says, you know, receive instruction. Listen to counsel. Children, listen to your parents. Parents say amen. <laughs> have prudence. Have foresight. Watch your words. Train your tongue. All these instructions. Simply this. If you're always willing to listen, you're willing to learn. Then you will hold back on how much you say. Because you want to listen to the other person first. You want to learn. So you and I must listen with an open mind, without prejudging other people. Of course, we have to be careful of what we listen to. We don't want to put garbage in. But the idea is you're listening in order to understand. You're listening in order to learn. You're listening in order to acquire wisdom. So always be learning. Always be listening. Always be learning. Sometimes there might be somebody who's junior to you, younger to you. And you know, our, our, our immediate thing is, well, I know more than that person. Who is that person? Tell me. But hey, it is wisdom to listen and learn. Maybe there is something that person is seeing which you are not seeing. And you can learn from that person. Amen? 
So you listen. There's nothing wrong. You're not going to lose anything by listening. And it works the other way too. Young people, we know you know everything. <laughs> You've been there, done that. <laughs> but still listen. Sometimes somebody older to you may have something that is of value to you. So listen. And learn. I said, man, my dad, he has not, he has not been there. No, no, no. Listen, learn. They may say something that you are not saying yet, that you haven't seen. Always be listening. Now, learning has to be intentional. Sometimes, you know, learning can be accidental. You bump your knee and, oh, I shouldn't make sure I don't do that again. Okay, we'd learn from that. But make learning intentional. Learn. Be in that learning mode. And make it intentional. Read books. Listen. Nowadays, you know, we have the advantage of tools available. Or, uh, you can have audio books or you can watch things online. Good stuff. But learn. So make learning intentional. You're growing. A wise man will learn, listen and increase learning. Number three. Don't take what is not, yes, simple. Don't take what is not, yes. So again, a lot of instructions in the book of Proverbs simply point to this one thing. Don't take what's not yours. If it's not yours, leave it alone. So, let's just, I'm just giving you one verse here. Proverbs 13, verse 11. Wealth gained by dishonesty will be, diminished. But he who gathers by labor will increase. In other words, if you are taking something through crooked means, you're actually taking what is not yours. So don't take what is not yours. A lot of other things that you see in Proverbs. I'll just mention these scriptures are there in the sermon notes. Don't use wicked ways for gain. Don't do ice evil against your neighbor. Don't strive with someone for no reason. Don't commit adultery. So in, a, in adultery, what are you are doing? You're, you're taking what's not yours. Basically, that's it. So don't take what's not yours. Don't be lazy. When you're being lazy, you're expecting somebody to give you something that's theirs, and you didn't work to get it. Or you didn't earn it. No. Don't be lazy. Don't take bribes. Don't use false weights and measures. Don't encroach on another's property. All of these instructions are simply this. Don't take what is not yours. So, so when you're making a decision, you know, working with people, you're making choices. If it's not yours, don't take it. Amen? Number four. Don't keep what you should be giving away. Many times God puts into your hands in order so that it can be released through you so that somebody else can be blessed and the blessing can be multiplied back to you. And it's so important that you don't keep what you should be giving Away. And again, one, just one scripture, Proverbs 3, verse 27. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is in the power of your hand to do so. It's, it's there in your hand, and God has assigned you to bless that person. Don't hold it back. Because that person may lose out, because God has assigned you to bless it. He's put it in your hands to bless that person. Now, you and I are not God. We are not here to supply for everybody's needs. That only God does. But there may be some people that God has placed, that God wants you to release. To. And when you release it, Proverbs says, he who waters will be watered himself. So when you release that, actually, it's going to bless you. So don't hold back on what you should be. Giving away. A lot of instructions in Proverbs. Give to those who need. If you have the means to help them. Show mercy. Give generously. 
speak good kind wholesome words so words can be something you give away because words can heal words can bless words can encourage don't hold those words back when you can actually release it and bless somebody bring correction and discipline you're doing somebody good when you're bringing correction you're bringing discipline don't hold it back share knowledge speak up for the speechless and powerless all these things are instructions proverbs and they point to this one thing don't keep what you should be giving away amen you may need to give away a nudge to your neighbor to give it away <laughs> wake him up don't keep what you should be giving the last one always and on all things walk in humility always and all things walk humbly before god humility is simply you and me saying you know i am dependent i am dependent on god i am dependent on others and because of that i'm willing to let the other person go first that's humility i recognize i'm dependent on god i recognize i'm i need other people I, i'm dependent on people and therefore i'm willing to let the other person go first humility and humility is key let's look at proverbs 11 verse 2 when pride comes then comes shame but with the humble is wisdom so when you're walking with humility wisdom becomes your friend and you're walking humbly before god and before people wisdom can grace your life but when we walk with pride wisdom distances itself because god distances himself from us so when you walk with humility then wisdom will grace your life and so several instructions in the book of proverbs several several times through the book he proverbs tells us to reject pride to choose humility to receive correction accept rebuke to seek and receive godly counsel all this requires humility to accept correction requires humility to seek for counsel requires humility but then that's when wisdom graces our life when we walk in humility so let's recap our five summary statements let's read it let's say it together number 1 always and all things honor the lord number 2 always be listening always be learning number 3 don't take what is not yours number 4 don't keep what you should be giving up Number 5 always and all things walk in humility. Eh, you've got the book of proverbs on your fingertips. <laughs> This is it. If you and I can just remember these simple things, you know, we can walk with wisdom. Have a wisdom walk. Next Sunday we're going to spend some time just looking at the rewards of wisdom walk and that will motivate us. to seek god for wisdom first and all the decisions we make the choices we make we say god you told us wisdom is the principal thing you know we all know about king solomon and it was david his father who taught solomon these words that we just read from proverbs 4 solomon says my father told me son wisdom is the principal thing therefore with all you're getting get wisdom so my father taught me so you know the story later on when solomon became king the lord appeared to him in a dream and said solomon what do you want you want a wild, big kingdom you want to win wars what do you want and solomon said lord give me How did Solomon know he had to ask for wisdom because his father told him 
son. Wisdom is the principal thing. But all you're getting, get wisdom. So he said, Lord, give me wisdom. And God was so thrilled about it. He said, Solomon, I'll give you wisdom. I'll give you everything else. He had a glorious reign. And so you and I, in our life situations, we, we go through different things in life. People are seated here this morning. Uh, you may be in college, maybe wondering what to do next once you graduate. You may be in your early stage in your career. You may, whatever, you're all in different stages of life and having to deal with all kinds of situations in life. First thing, God, give me wisdom. Because you said wisdom is the number one thing. It's the most important thing. God, give me wisdom. God, show me. Give me insight. Give me understanding. Give me prudence, Lord. And when you and I walk with wisdom, when we maintain our wisdom walk, God said, wisdom will promote you. It will exalt you. It will give you glory, honor, all this that you want. It will come. You maintain your wisdom. Walk. It will come. Amen. So we're going to take a few moments just to uh, pray. I want to encourage you to pray for wisdom. Whatever situation you're going through, pray. God, I want wisdom in my life for this. And uh, we will also, I will also pray over our lives. Believing God for healings, for miracles, for deliverances. Because our God is a big God. He's a mighty God. Amen. There's nothing impossible with our God. There could be situations that you're going through where you say, God, I need you to intervene. I need you to turn around situations. Uh, there could be things you're facing, you're battling. And you say, I need my God to come through for me. And so as I pray, I want you to believe God for healing, for deliverance, for intervention, for a miracle in your life. If Jesus was here, he would do it for you. He would do miracles for you. He would heal. He would deliver. And he is here in his church, among his people. And he will meet your needs. So call our worship team up, please. And we're going to uh, just worship God for a few moments. And then we are going to pray. As you're praying, I want to encourage you to, first of all, pray for wisdom in your own life. Uh, whatever situation you're facing, you pray for wisdom. Say, God, give me wisdom. Understanding, And then I'm just going to transition into a time just to pray for healings, for miracles, for deliverances, that God can meet the needs of people who are here. Uh, and I want you to just expect God to do that. Look to Jesus. Like the Bible says, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed. He's still the miracle worker. He's still our deliverer. He's still our healer. And he will do it for you and me this morning. So, All right, let's rise to our feet, please. We're going to just worship the Lord for a few minutes. And as we worship, you pray. Pray on prayer to the Lord. And then we just go to our pray over all of us. Thank you for being here. I want you to have expectation in your heart this morning. Expect the Lord. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. He's our God. Thank you. 
of our lives in our life situations by your word by your Holy Spirit impart wisdom God for each one of us impart wisdom that we may know what to do that we may be able to make the right choices that honor you that please you glorify you. Father, for the business people here, grace their lives with your wisdom. For the professionals here, grace their lives with wisdom. Let wisdom be the hallmark of our lives. And people see excellence, the glory of God revealed as we walk with wisdom God, let them see the goodness of God, the glory of God revealed in our lives may the words we speak God express your wisdom thank you Father Father, we just now pray for those who have come here with various needs in their lives. Those who need healing in their bodies. Those who need deliverance from situations and circumstances. Or from oppressions over their mind or their body. Lord, you are our healer. You are our deliverer. You are the miracle worker. You're still the same. You're still the same. You haven't changed. And so, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will work miracles for your people right now. Work miracles for your people right now. I take authority over every demonic work, every bondage, oppressions in the mind, the voices that tell you you will not succeed, the voices that tell you you will never make it. In the name of Jesus, I silence those voices. And I declare to you that God always causes you to triumph. That through God, you will do valiantly. You are a success waiting to happen because God is for you. He's on your side. So let the voices of the lies of the enemy fall off right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray 
We release promotion, God. Exaltation, the lifting up that comes from God. Let that be released for your people. Promotion, exaltation. That the mighty hand of God lifts you up. Release that for your people in this place. Thank you, Father. I just want to pray for very quickly for those who need healing. Just lay your hand on that part of your body if you can. Just generally, just lay it anywhere on your body as a sign that you're saying, God, I want you to touch me right now. As prayer is being made, I want you to touch me, touch my body. Just an act of your faith. Father, I pray for every person here who needs healing. In the name of Jesus, I command every infirmity, sickness and disease to leave your body command chronic ailments to leave. Arthritis, I command it to leave. Diabetes, I command it to leave and let there be wholeness and healing coming in. Let these things be a thing of the past in your life. In the name of Jesus, let there's constant pain in the joints leave now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, oh God. Thank you. Eye problems, constant ringing in the ears. Let there be healing now in the name of Jesus. Be released from those problems in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we thank you. We bless you, God. Even conditions the doctors may have given up. Receive your healing now in the name of Jesus. Receive your wholeness now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness. Take a few minutes. Just thank you. Just thank you. Father, we thank you for your goodness in this place. Thank you for your goodness in this place. If you had a healing take place right now that you can attest to, then just feel free to come up right now. If something happened to you that you can, you know that you were healed, come up now. Some conditions, you need to go do an examination. You need to go get checked up. Please do that first. But if you know something has happened to you, a healing took place right now, then we just want you to come up. We'll take a quick testimony before we close. Maybe you had some growths on your hand and they just disappeared or scars, it just disappeared. Something you can very clearly say it happened. Then just come forward, we'll take your testimony. Otherwise, you know, please get checked up, verify it. Then you can share your testimony by email. We will share it with the congregation. But if something has happened right now, just, just feel free to come walk up right here. We give you a mic and you can share your testimony. Let's sing for one more time. You deserve the glory. And I'll be close. Thank you. Close up the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands and worship as we lift your hope.
Anybody with a testimony before we close? You want to come up forward to testify? Anybody with a testimony? Joby, what happens? My eyesight became much better. I couldn't see the people on the stage before. The face was not clear. Oh. And I could see the worship team very clearly now. Wow. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, Job, if you want to get it checked by a doctor, and so some of our unbelieving believers will believe. <laughs> but thank you. you. You could say that. Anybody else? You had a testimony now? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Okay, okay. We're going to get okay, close. Let's close. Father, I just declare over your people that we are blessed. We are victorious. We are empowered. We are equipped. That we will go out and make a difference in our world. Through the course of this week, God, help us, each of us speak at least to one person about Jesus. To point at least one person to Jesus through the course of this week. Use our lives for your glory. Thank you, Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, TV programs, publications, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play stores.